So I saw a movie yesterday, and clearly it's obviously Civil War, the movie. And I was, um, I went in, uh, how do I explain it? You know what? It's not what you expect. What's up, my know-it-alls? All right, so Mrs. Know-it-all and I went to the movies last night, and we saw a little ditty called uh, Civil War. And both of us were trepidatious about seeing this movie because we were concerned it might be triggering in some way. No clue what. I think the marketing has sort of pushed this movie, and then th there's a the, the bottom line for me is there's a narrative. I'm going to go non-spoiler to start, and then we're going to dive into the movie itself. So... Non-spoilery, uh, there's a through line that we've all seen in the advertising and whatnot. They've really pushed this thing forward that it is about, heck, it's even in the name Civil War. Okay, it's supposed to be about a civil war. I don't know that that's what it's about. And in the spoiler side of this, we'll get into more of that. So the movie, if you're concerned, first and foremost, if you're concerned about this being triggering or this or that, um, Mrs. Know-It-All was more affected by some of the violence she saw portrayed. You've seen in the trailers, there's uh, scenes of people hanging and whatnot uh, and different things like that. And, and there's visuals. The problem is we live in a modern era. We live in a modern era where we've seen these things. There's nothing in this movie. This movie, other than having... there's There are three moments where this movie has something to say, but it's not about what you think it is. And so I feel like if you were concerned about, well, I don't want to go see this movie. It's going to be triggered to this and that left, right, whatever, whoever, all those things. It's none of those things. Go see the movie. Seriously. It's be, feel safe seeing the movie. Now, are there some gruesome imagery? Yes, but it's nothing we haven't seen in your average horror movie or murder mystery or thriller. The acting is... The acting is, um, um, I'm going to say something. Uh, the acting is mid, but not because it's mid. The acting is mid because they're behaving like real life people. And real life people, we don't, I don't normally go to the movies to see movies like this. I promised you guys this year I would see more films. And so I went to go see this. Um, it's not a, but it's not, uh, it's not like an Oscar award winning anything. The movie was, and maybe that's the problem. Maybe I I went in with ex different expectations and then this movie diffused them by not being anything I thought it was going to be. So trust me when I tell you, this movie is nothing you think it's going to be. I will say this, the most interesting part, truthfully, was probably the movie theater because there was all types of people at the movie theater when we went to, except we were in the front row because we were in a very comfortable AMC theater. So the front row is comfortably far away. It's not super close. And two rows, two people, two seats down, there was a gentleman who showed up, uh, camo shorts, uh, a, a particular type of shirt that espoused a particular group right and left. I'm not going to get into. It doesn't matter. Big, long, uh, Jack Black looking, tenacious D-sized beard. And a band, and then in the USA, black, white, red, white, and blue uh, bandana. Okay? And I painted that picture. Camo cargo shorts. Uh, and then he had like sneakers and whatever else. And as soon as he got there, we were there a little bit early, but he got, he walks in, sits down, reclines his chair and he's just there. And at certain parts of the movie, he would like fold his hands. He was taking it in very much. And by, and as soon as the, it was done, as soon as it was done, got up and left. And I remember looking over at Mrs. Dodo and I was like, Woo! So many scenarios I went through in my head. Okay, that was the most exciting part of the movie for me, and it wasn't even in the movie. Overall, it's worth seeing. Uh, a friend of mine was going to go see it 30 minutes after I saw it, and I remember I called him up immediately and said, hey, have you seen the movie yet? He's like, no, I haven't. I said, okay, do me a favor. Lower your expectations. Not because it's bad, but because I went in, I went in like you go into something you know is going to upset you, but you know you have to see it, whether it's a whatever responsibility you want to have as a person or with civic duty or whatever you want to call it. So I went in very, 
okay, I'm going to go watch this. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch this. And then was kind of deflated the whole time. Like, I was just like, well, okay, what is, what is this? And I'm watching and I'm watching. It had, it had more documentary vibes than anything, you know? Uh, okay. So if you, if you've been here this long, there's time codes in the description. If you want to jump ahead to the, to the, to the, my, my score, you'll see the score down below in the description. You can see a little, you just click that little time code. It'll take you right to the know it all index rating. If you don't mind spoilers and you love what we do on this channel, because all we do is spoil, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to know if you haven't seen it yet, because you think you know what it is, do yourself a favor, go watch it, go see it. It's nothing that you think it is. Trust me. So then now maybe you can enjoy the movie on it on those merits. My friend afterwards did say that my advice helped and he was like, oh, yeah, no, I, I, he was able to enjoy it differently than he might have enjoyed it had it gone in like I did. Okay. All right. All that out of the way, here come the spoilers. You gotta roll. The movie starts with Kirsten Dunst's Lee Smith, Wagner Moore's Joel, and Kaylee Spaney's Jesse. So you have Lee, Joel, and Jesse. They're not together yet. Lee and Joel are there at, at, at what looks like a protest of some sort having to do with the separate... You find out almost immediately. Because it actually... Okay. The movie actually opens with uh, with Nick Offerman doing as the president. And he's sort of rehearsing what his speech is going to be about how they've they've won a decisive victory and this and that. And he's sort of like reviewing almost 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 actor style. Like, like he's really doing this whole like, I want to say the things I need to say. Blah, blah, blah. He's doing his Nick Offerman es nest. Then we cut to the, it's the full actual thing. And it's Kirsten Dunst in a hotel and you see a fire or explosion not far away. And it's a scene from the trailer we've all seen. And she's watching his thing and she's just kind of got this face on like, what is, what, what's going on? What is this? Again, nothing spectacular in terms of nobody's sitting here going over the top. Everyone's acting the way a normal person would. So it's understand real life is actually kind of underwhelming sometimes when you compare it to the hyperbole or the hyperbolic nature of films and cinema, okay? So the, we then cut to that scene I was just talking about a second ago where you have this protest of some sort and you see uh, you see Lee, Joel there, and you see Jesse, who, by the way, she plays a 23-year-old girl who's uh, trying to get her bearings in terms of being, she wants to be a photojournalist, and she idolizes uh, idolizes Lee Smith. She's running around with her little teeny camera and she's doing her, taking pictures of stuff. And at one point or another, uh, there's this massive, uh, ex you see, sh uh, what I loved, what I genuinely loved about this moment was they show you, there's a lot of show and show don't tell, but they show you what I consider to be the wrong things. But you see this, they show this woman, they get no name for her whatsoever, and she puts on a vest and she's got a flag, and come to find out, she's a suicide, we're, and it's an American suicide bomber, right? And so this woman runs with a flag, and as soon as she runs by, you see Kirsten Dunn's character grab Jessie, the younger girl, pulls her down, because she's got years of experience as a photojournalist, she's got years of experience with this kind of thing in other countries. But she knows, she knows the signs. That's the one thing they give. They give Kristen Dunst's character a lot of, uh, a lot of um, wisdom because of who, who, what she is. You find out later on that she was actually like, uh, like the, one of the youngest photographers to catch some, some really important moment during her college stuff. And she, she, that made her famous immediately. And she was able to start working. Uh, the entire group works for, uh, works for Reuters, except for Jesse. But Jesse later on, uh, that's Callie Sweeney's character. Um, uh, who knows what's going to happen later. Anyway, it's about the journey for this character, for, for Jesse. So the movie centers around this photographer, photojournalist group, which I'm sure many of you have heard. The country's been split into the United States, but then you have the Western forces, which are apparently Texas and California. And then Florida has tried to become its own thing. And, and uh, the, the problem is you hear, you hear on the news from like the president and some other people that Florida failed to pull North Carolina and some other places into its mini co essentially everyone's trying to divvy up as quickly as possible during all this chaos. 
And uh, but Florida is inconsequential. Aside from that, mention they're not the Western forces. The Western forces are California and Texas, and we don't actually know. I mean, we hear that the president uh, he served a third term, which an illegal third term. He disbanded the FBI. He used uh, he used air air assault or whatever, or used an airstrike on on Americans, American soil, whatever else. So those are some of the things. But you, they never give you a point in time. This civil war is a backdrop. It is not the focus. It is 100% not the focus. Um, and it, the, I said earlier, the movie has three times where it has something to say. The very first time is when, uh, is when the, so they somehow, there's an old, there's an old reporter played by Stephen McKinley Henderson um, you might remember him from the first Dune, Dune Part One, and uh, he plays a character named Sammy. Sam is an old school uh, journalist who write he writes, and so the goal is that uh, Kristen Dunn's character and Wagner Moore's character are heading to Washington. They're determined to get in front of the president, ask him some questions, and take his photo. Period. That is their goal. Sammy just wants to get to the front lines, which is North Carolina or something, or Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. And so they are all shifting and they're moving through there. And this is their road trip. This is the weirdest road trip movie you're ever going to see in your life. First time movie has something to say is they stop overnight. And they're in this parking lot area, whatever. It's nighttime. And it's the scene you've seen in the trailers where Kristen Dunn's sitting on a sofa. Sammy's sitting next to her. And this is the one where she says, I thought every time I went to go shoot something, I thought I was sending home a warning. Don't do this. First time there'd be something to say. And that's a good moment. And even then, Sammy calls her out and says, oh, is, are you having an existential crisis? She absolutely is. This whole thing focuses around, she's one of the first focuses. And that is, you have this photojournalist who's all over the world filming wars, filming things of that nature. And she has, and she feels like she's like, what the heck was it all for if nobody at home listened? If nobody learned the lessons? And she's got this strangely defeatist mentality. Now, in retrospect, seeing where the movie ends up, it all makes sense, okay? But that's the first moment this movie has something to say. The second time this movie has something to say is the moment that we've all seen with Jesse Plemons' character. Jesse Plemons' character plays a... He's clearly for the president, for the America, not for the Western forces, not for Florida, whatever else. And... There's this time where they run into these other, they're on the road, all the journalists, and there's this other, these two Chinese journalists who are also part of the same organization, but obviously the Chinese office. And they're, they're, they have this road game, and the one guy to feel alive jumps through the window to the other while the cars are going top speed. And so then what happens is Jesse jumps, she says, I want to do the same thing. She's young, she's feeling alive, and she goes and she jumps through. And at that point, they go speeding off, and Kristen Dunn's character almost runs off the road because of a military truck or whatever else. This is the moment when they lose sight of them and Kirsten Dunst's character loses. She's like, I don't know. I want Jesse back in this car, blah, 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 this and that. Apparently nobody has cell phones. And so they go and they find the car doors open. They go and they follow. And apparently Jesse Plemons' character, we don't know how, uh, he has ex mocking them into being, he's got a giant bot pit grave, a giant gr uh, grave full of bodies. None of the bodies are in uniform. That's the first sign of trouble. That these guys aren't just crazies who are trying to get away with murder. Okay? Old guy Sammy can't go with them. He can't run. He's not fast enough. Kirsten, everybody else goes out there because they've got both Jesse and this other guy, this other journalist, uh, uh, Tony. No, it's actually, I'm sorry, it's Bohai. Uh, played by Evan Lai. Evan Lai plays Bohai. Nelson Lee plays Tony. Tony stayed with them. He's the one that crossed over to their car. Jesse went into the other car. Bohai and Jesse are on the ground, essentially like this, on the ground. Jesse Plemons' character has his gun. He's all military fatigues. Him and his buddies are just burying all these bodies. And then, I mean, bull. And that's when they show up. That's when they have this huge altercation. The guy's like, he's like, oh, yeah, this and that. Well, this, this guy here, this is your buddy. Bam, pops him. Done. But again, there's no shock value for us. Because we've seen Jesse Plemons be crazy. We've seen, the problem is they cast him for a particular reason. But we've seen this. I feel like this movie would have been better served by casting unknown people 
because then we wouldn't know what to expect. But that's like back in the day when you would cast Alan Rickman as a villain because, I'm sorry, we all went, oh, Alan Rickman, the guy's a bad guy, clearly. Like, we would just know. When you see Jesse Plemons, he's not playing a good guy. You just know. You know what kind of character he's, he, he is. So they telegraph that he's a bad guy. and you. So there's nothing surprising, period. There's no surprise here in this moment. You know Jesse Plemons' character, so when he pops Bohai, I'm not stunned. I'm kind of, I was actually, I'm actually more stunned by what happens next. So then he begins asking everybody where you're from, this and that. And the guy's like, we're all Americans. You've seen that scene in the trailer? And he goes, what kind of American? Okay. What kind of American are you? And uh, uh, it's it's so funny because he dude's like, first off, um, uh, uh, Joel Wagner's character says, he's like, I'm from Florida. Like, don't hold it against me, please. He's so ashamed of himself being from Florida, which literally I, I identify with because I was raised in Florida. Everyone else is like, oh, Jesse's from, her family's in Missouri. Uh, Kirsten Dunst's family is in Colorado. And then they get to uh, Nelson Lee's Tony, who is sobbing. Tony knows he's effed. Tony knows. And he goes, China? And dude goes, oh, you're Chinese? Oh, okay, yeah, China. Yeah, I got you. Then I jumped. Mainly because, it was, it was I don't want to call it a jump scare. But it, it. It was so shocking because one second dude's talking and Jesse Plumbins is being rational and then kapayo done. Everyone freaks out. And dude's like, what's going on? And he comes this jelly match. Everybody calm down, calm down, this that. Sammy shows up to the rescue. Sammy comes in in the clutch. He drives the press SUV that they have. It's like this giant tile or whatever. Slams into Jesse Plemons character, knocks, uh, knocks uh, uh, Jesse the photographer played by Callie Sweeney into the 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 bury the giant uh, communal grave thing. This visually, this next this moment where you see her having to climb over bodies to get out of the thing, and Joel is freaking out, but he's got enough sense to go and get her out. That whole moment is surreal. Dude, Sammy's like, get in the car. And they all jump into the car and they go off. And one of his friends who was in, one of Jesse Plemons' friends who was in the truck, jumped, runs out, finds, tries to find a gun. I guess it jams. But finally he goes off and he shoots him with shots and whatever. They, they're driving down the road. And at one point, Sammy says, I need someone else to drive. And he's been shot. They stop, they get in, whatever. And he's sitting in the back seat and they drive and they keep driving through the night. And while they're driving through the night, everybody is just still in stun. They're still stunned. It is the most well-shot moment. There are fires happening in the forest, and there's embers everywhere. And you see dude leaning against the glass, looking up, and he's like, and you see through the reflection, and he's just watching the, and the embers, and you're like, and Mrs. Know it all said that that scene's gorgeous. Like it's it's horrific, but gorgeous at the same the way that it was filmed. The movie's filmed beautifully. Like there are set pieces everywhere. I skip some other parts because I feel like they're parts that are important enough for you to see for yourself. But like there's a part of the gas station where they, that's the part where they're hanging people and stuff and whatnot. And you get this there's that small town they went to. Uh that's so that's the the that the movie begins to want to say something there. That's the scene you've seen in the trailers. I guess aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Seems like it's for the best. First time I saw that, I was like, oh, is this is this what the movie's trying to say? That we're apathetic with this and that? Because again, the whole time, I'm trying to understand what is this movie saying? What is the message? What is the story here? That's when I finally realized what the story is. Obviously, the photographers and their journalists and their journeys and whatever else. So again, none of this had any of the through line that I thought it was going to have. And so the third time the movie has something to say, they make it, uh, they make it to the, they make it to the base. You find out that the, um, you find out the generals for the quote unquote America, the president, the president's general advisors have all surrendered to the Western forces. The Western forces pretty much just have to march into Washington and take it over. That's what they have to do. Obviously, um, Nick Offerman's president is holed up in. They literally from like one street, like in a surrounding so many blocks have built a wall to sort of with like checkpoints into the White House. And so that's where they, they get in. They finally, um, it looks like the president and the Secret Service are going to make a break for it. 
and they bust through the certain walls, this and that. The military for the Western forces are taking them out. And at, at one point, by the way, at this point, Kirsten Dunn's character has begun having something that looks akin to PTSD. She's she's not able to think too clearly. Everyone's meanwhile, Jesse has come into her own. She's taking pictures. She's in every moment. She's in the face of it. Where in earlier scenes, you had to see Joel sort of dragging her along to teach her how to do stuff. She's now learned to the point that she's in front of Joel and uh, and Lee. The whole, and you're just like, dang, look at her go. The next part where the movie has something to say. And in the end, they do, uh, the, the, they do catch and dispatch with the president. And that whole scene is fine, but it's kind of empty compared to what happens just before. They're, they're, they're whittling down everything. They're stopping all resistance. There's a huge military, there's the huge, there's like, a squad of however many six people, whatever that are there. At one point, they uh, they they take out the president's secretary who's supposed to negotiate for his safe uh, his safe turn, and they're like, "Yeah, sure, come around here. We'll make sure he's nice and taken care of." Whatever. Bottom line is, they're done with him. He's done. He's good. They, this feels like this feels like the Osama bin Laden uh, thing, like like Saddam Hussein. This feels like they're going to take out a despot. And before that, there's this moment. Where she's getting, Jesse's getting riskier and riskier photos. And finally she jumps out in, the, in a hallway where all these guys are pointing guns down the hallway. And Kirsten Dunn sees and she shoves her down and stands in the hallway. And through the picture, and they do this wonderful thing with the... And you see it shot frame for frame. And every time they get pictures, black and white. And you see her get hit. And you see her go down. And her character is unceremoniously gone. Gone. They don't see her anymore. Jesse's character. Uh, dude gets up. Goes with them. She stands up. She walks a few feet. She looks back. And then she's on the job. And we have now evolved. And they, that was the third time it had something to say. Then it's over. And it ends unceremoniously as the end credits title credits are, are, are rolling you see what looks like a photograph um uh uh sort of uh, developing and it's a photograph of soldiers posed up with the body of the dead with the body of the president i remember thinking to myself that's it really and uh, and sure enough that was it so uh, there you go now you know it looks the battle you're halfway to being a know-it-all yourself What's an all index for me for this uh, for this movie, Civil War, the movie? I'm gonna honestly, I wasn't. The acting is fine because remember they're trying to be themselves, but there's nothing that stands out about it. The they don't. You get very little backstory about any of the characters. Everyone is what you see is what you get, and it's it's. It feels like the movie wanted to be something that it wasn't. That's why I said the movie is mid at best. Um, I think I'm underwhelmed because I I went into it with different expectations than what I got. So that's why I've been saying don't go in with expectations, otherwise anyone will be disappointed. So what's my score? On a different platform, I gave this thing a C+. I'm going to give this a, for me, that means this is a 7.7 .7 out of 10. So comment below, let me know what you thought of the movie, if you've had an opportunity to see it. If you're worried about seeing it and you did finally see it, please let me know that too, because I'd love to know if I helped sort of get this thing going a little more. Because again, I, I feel like there's a better movie in here than I saw because I went in with expectations. So would love to hear your comments and your thoughts. Until next time, never forget, everyone loves a know it.